Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video I test the Gargantuan Monument Launcher in 1.11. This is a launcher designed to launch a fully fueled Saturn V into orbit, that's 3,000 tons to low Earth orbit. But the problem with it has always been that it's really, really slow. Not, not slow in speed, slow in frame rate and physics rate. It takes a long time to get to orbit and it's sort of halting like it is right now. The frame rates are bad. But there are other weirdnesses. I just popped up with the F3 dialogue there because off the pad it went at 3 G's. And this is a problem that I've noticed in 1.11 for some reason, perhaps just with realism overhaul, in that the rockets either are very sticky off the pad, or they like jump off the pad at a much higher thrust weight ratio than they should, and this one jumped off much higher than it should have, and then settled back down to its correct thrust to weight ratio. Anyway, that's so that's a issue with 1.11 that I would like an answer to, but here we see the plume, and the plume is causing lag, and it is real plumes, and it's creating a whole lot of particles for all the engines on this. Uh, in total, 99,000 particles. I set it to be able to do 200,000, but it maxes out at 99,000. And we have booster set here. Very, very slowly. And off they go. So those boosters, uh, they're, they're sort of coupled together. There's a lot of nozzles. There's a lot of thrust transforms. I think it was 64 altogether. So uh, in terms of how many nozzles there are at the bottom of this, we have 105, or had 105. We just dumped 64, and there's 41 on the core aerospike-ish engine, the monument engine. And so that's the little bunny tail plume that we've got there right now. And granted, I'm not very good at configuring plumes to begin with, uh, but I don't think in terms of frame rate we're gonna get too much better and you can see the look of the plumes uh, That could be improved, but again, I don't specialize in that and Yeah, there we go with fairing separation and the Saturn V Yes <laughs> Yes, it's a Saturn V. Honestly for a rocket this size it gets pretty good performance I mean, it's not too bad on the second stage, only four of the engines actually gimbal. You can see them wiggling because Smart ASS apparently doesn't know what to do with this situation very well and just sort of wobbles it a little bit. Uh, but, yep. Uh, the launcher was, of course... Uh, it was originally made with procedural parts and then I improved on it in Blender as far as the look is concerned. We don't have a decoupler for the Saturn V right now, so it won't be doing anything on its own. It's just there to create lag basically and to simulate a payload that would create lag let's put it that way and here we are making orbit with a lot of extra delta v and that's because i had changed the engine the monument engine instead of originally having 36 m1 engines basically it uh, was upgraded to 41. anyway so i decided to try out waterfall now i'm not an expert at creating plumes in the first place, and I definitely don't know anything about waterfalls, so I just copied other plumes and sized them up by a factor of eight, uh, was what it turned out to be necessary. And so that's what we have here, a waterfall implemented monument rocket, the first time I've ever used waterfall on anything, and this is what it looks like. The engine light is probably a little bit too strong, and the plume... Well, it's very straight at this point. Obviously, we're getting better performance. The time to orbit with the real plume version was 22 minutes and 20 seconds real time. The in-game time was about 10 minutes, so the, the amount of time was basically 2 to 1 or close to that. And uh, here we are. That's the look of the plume. Now, the thing about Waterfall is it doesn't... It, it, it sort of feels a little bit too stylized to me, but obviously there are benefits. The benefit is that we have frame rate. <laughs> And, um, and it, it, you know, it doesn't look too bad, but it's just a little bit stylized. Especially as we get higher up, we'll, you'll see what I mean as the colors become more distinct. Anyway, but right now the flames are okay. Definitely acceptable. And the benefits outweigh the drawbacks, clearly, especially with this rocket. That's why I decided to 
try waterfall for the first time with this rocket because obviously it needs it. And here we are at booster set. And how will the boosters go? We can see the core has a more Hydrolox plume to it. And off go the boosters in the in the raise asterisk, as I call it. And but here here the plume I, I don't really like this look. And again, I, I just copied another plume and maybe some tweaking would make it look a little bit better. But you can see it's sort of very hard line on the edges of this. You know, it could do with some blurring. Now the separation between the first and second stages, this this bit, which sort of looks like a hot staging, is better. I mean, the, uh, the staging plume is better. And there goes the fairings. But, yeah, I mean, I need more waterfall tips to how to make this even better, perhaps. I do need to tune the engine light thing so that it doesn't flick on the side as well. It's really annoying, the flickering on the side of the rocket with the engine light. I don't know why it does that. But other than that, at least the Monument rocket works in 1.11, though we have the caveat of that sudden 3Gs off the pad. And I don't know, maybe that's Kerbal Joint Reinforce? I mean, I'm trying to speculate about what might be causing it. But, of course, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement does something with the physics uh, to sort of stabilize things. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know what could cause that right off the pad. And half the time it's a high acceleration and half the time it's just sort of stuck there for a little while. So, neither of which I want to have happen. But anyway... That's for a later time. The Monument Launcher functionally works. It brings its advertised payload to orbit. It could bring more than its advertised payload to orbit. The time the waterfall version took was 17 minutes and 35 seconds. So it saved about 4 minutes and 45 seconds, which is good. And we got more frames, obviously. So that was the result. And I got my first taste of waterfall. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.